So I asked about the Web2 bug bounties and how, how did you succeed? Like, how was your results? Were you able to get some nice rewards? What kind of vulnerabilities were you able to spot? Was it like some uh, high severity ones like remote code execution, SQL injection, or just, you know, small uh, successes I, here and there? It, it, it was smaller successes and also on programs that were like more private or on other platforms. So uh, on the big ones, it's very complicated. Uh, I, I do think at some point I had something on Red Bull, but uh, couldn't really uh, get to the end. Uh, and was starting to get bored, I spent days on that and then just gave up because I was, wasn't, uh, wasn't having fun anymore. Um, but no, I actually went uh, to the non um, like non-exposed ones uh, that don't really have a program on big platforms. And this is where I saw success. And I think the, the, the main success, but cannot really call that a success, but it just felt like those that didn't even had, uh, have a bug bounty program that were not rewarding, just had some, you know, responsible disclosure program that was so full of so full of bugs. It was amazing. It's like you are trying to find bugs where you can get a bounty and it's super hard. And then you just go somewhere where they don't seem to care, but there's still a responsible disclosure one. And you keep on finding bugs, keep on finding them. And uh, there's such a difference. Uh, it's good for the motivation and for actually knowing that uh, uh, you are skilled because sometimes you spend time not finding anything. Um, but uh, it's also kind of scary. <laughs> Yeah, it's very similar to Web3. It's like it seems like the way you um, describe your experience of Web2 bug bounty is very similar to what we see now in Web3. So first, you said that you were joining a community and it really helped you uh, to meet people and to work together. And this is something that we see also in Web3. And people appreciate it a lot that you have so many good, supportive communities where people make friends, partners, colleagues. And this is awesome. Also, you say that you had more luck finding vulnerabilities in um, projects that were not listed as bug bounties, which is another thing that I hear more often now in Web3. So the actual projects that are listed in Immunify because of the competition and that all the great researchers just try to find bugs in them, it's much harder to find bugs. But if you go to projects that maybe go to DeFi Llama and search projects with high TVL that are not listed in Immunify, you might find more bugs. So it might be more easy because it's a bit under the radar, but you have also a risk because uh, you don't know if you will get paid. There is no like an organized process. You don't have like a third party that connects between you, the researcher, to the team, so you also have risk, and it's a bit scary because you don't know what will be the result. I think it's uh, it's always uh, scary because even with a third party, uh, their power is limited. Uh, Immunify, I know they work super hard uh, to keep uh, everything up, but uh, sometimes they just uh, they cannot really do anything uh, when a project does, just doesn't comply. Um, so. Um, it's scary both ways. And we did see recently uh, the, the proof of what I kind of said with 100 proof and his big uh, bug bounty finding. You are aware of it? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it does seem like a, a nice strategy. And actually, the project was audited. So I figured maybe we should look at uh, audit reports from companies and then look if they are listed on Immunify or, or Hatstot Finance or the Saloon. And uh, if they aren't, maybe you can kind of, um, maybe there would be less competition. And you'd be more likely to. Yeah, find yeah. There are there are very interesting strategy when it comes to bug hunting. There is one strategy that I discussed with Owen from Guardian mm -hmm. Audits. For example, Owen is very sufficient. Is very like uh, confident with uh, GMX protocol, and yeah. he audited the, the code bases several times. So I told him, why don't you? It's like an alpha secret here, but I'm, I told you, why don't you go to all the forks on all the other chains, or not even forks, maybe just similar protocols that are imp trying to implement perpetual and synthetic assets uh, exchanges, and just try to find for the same patterns, for the same mistakes, because maybe GMX has $300 million 
dollars total value log, but you can find like a twenty million dollars total value log that is not listed in Unify, and try to secure this one because you are already familiar with how to implement correctly perpetual dexes. What are the common mistakes? So you can just go to this like long tail projects with the lower TVL, find bugs there, provide value there, and try to get also your bounty there with less competition. It's a very interesting strategy. What do you think? Uh, I think I heard that uh, recently there was uh, an interview with a, a triager from uh, Immunify. He did say that some people in Web2, through the uh, Web2 bug bounty programs uh, on Immunify, do report again and again and again on every project the, the same kind of bugs because people just keep making the, the same mistake. And I believe uh, when you've got some alpha or some niche knowledge that you can uh, I won't say automate, but uh, reproduce between uh, projects. Um, I think you should definitely do that. So you should uh, find that kind of mistake because other people would be looking for the other more standard uh, mistakes. And if you are more likely to find something fast, faster than the others, uh, or just that they can't find, uh, do it again and again and again. I, I believe. This is a very nice strategy. It brings value because, uh, yeah, if, if you don't make the report, they won't necessarily fix the code and they will get wrecked, likely. So, yeah, it does bring value. Yeah. And this is the game. In the end, um, it will, like, uh, it will be common knowledge at some point. But when you are first, you've got that uh, advantage of being first and having some niche knowledge. Uh, that's also the case on Code Arena uh, when you've got some unique findings and then people just keep copying it. And then you've got 30 people, 40 people uh, posting the same thing. At first, you could earn thousands on something and then it ends up uh, becoming like uh, not even a low severity finding, but uh, an NC, you see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so definitely. Much common knowledge. <laughs> 